presentation from 4 to 5.30. Yep. Also, Sunday school started at 10 this morning, and um, starting next week, they will start rehearsing at, uh, for the Christmas program, and so there's a, they have a big skit that they're going to be performing uh, as part of it, and also adult fellowships at 10. Uh, this this uh, Wednesday, youth group will be at 6.30 p.m., and um, duty volunteers for still for some activities of food. Um, November the 18th, uh, also youth parents are encouraged to come to youth group as we will be discussing the upcoming mission trip and getting kids signed up because there is a website to go to for that. Um, and they have to create an account. Uh, November the 8th will be charge conference and that's at 2 p.m. and that will be in the fellowship hall. It's also a uh, Zoom conference. Advent Bible study books are in, and I have 10 of them. If I need to purchase more, I'm more than willing to do so. Uh, they are $10 a piece. You can see me or Mary Tyler, and they will be available here at church, or I can bring them on the next Sundays or so. Uh, November 30th will be when the, it starts, which is a Monday evening, and it'll be at 6.30. And it will run through the 21st. Uh, the only day will not be on a Monday will be December the 8th. That will be, be that Tuesday instead of the 7th. Any more announcements? Remember, today is All Saints Day. And we have our All Saints candle. Um, if the name is read, if you feel you want to stand during when a particular name is called, please do so. And also remember, we have our little communion cups, and it's the peel, and uh, remember how to do that. Peel the top, and then the, below that's the drink. And if there are no more announcements, let us prepare for worship, and we'll have uh, Denise get us sent to the center. This morning I've chosen a piece called Reflections, and I um, hope that this puts us in a reflective mood for All Saints Sunday. It's uh, found in the insert. All our, uh, a lot of our liturgy is this week is found in the insert pages. We have come to affirm our historic faith. We have come to remember God's benefits to us, the living. To respond in thanksgiving to the mighty word. We 
have come to affirm our trust in God of all futures.
ministering in all your compassion to the multitudes, near to us and far from us, so that one day we may stand amidst the multitude that gathers at your heavenly throne. We pray this in the name of our Savior and Redeemer, Christ our Lord. Amen. Sit down. Our scripture readings today, our first one comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. If then there is any encouragement in Christ and any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, be in full accord and one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but in, to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that it was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in the human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, the glory of God the Father. Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through uh, chapter 2, verse 12. And I know this is going to sound, this, you're going to think, this isn't Christmas yet. But there's a purpose for this. We are at All Saints Day. And if it, in four weeks we will be at Christ the King Sunday. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But then, just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall, they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And when Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and that his name named him Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who was born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may have go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that stopped, they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, 
They were overwhelmed with joy on entering the house. They saw the child and Mary and his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left their own country in another room. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 327. Crown him with many crowns.
century. The three hundred. The three hundred. Uh, that'd be the second century. The so third, third, fourth century is the three hundred. But he lived through the in the fourth century. He even wrote something that's in our Bible in our hymnals called the Nicene Creed. Yes. Yeah. And Saint Nicholas is a real friend. His name people live in a town called Mayo. And he did. He we'll be talking about him more on Saint Nicholas Day in December. But yeah, he was a real saint. He was a real person. He did deliver presents, and he saved the lives of three girls. Ow. And he punched out a guy in church. Ow. <laughs> that my daughter Lydia loves that story. His guy's name was Arius, and Arius was shooting off at the mouth of this in this uh, conference they were having. And Eric and Saint Nicholas walked up to him and sucker punched him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet you didn't think St. Nicholas could do that, did you? Oh, well, see, they were fighting over who was right about some church stuff. And we were talking about who, about who God was. He was very Yeah, if you ever see the movie Rise of the Guardians, they have St. Nicholas in there, and they, they make an allude, they, they kind of allude to the fact that he punched somebody because across his knuckles, he has naughty or nice tattoo. So that's where they. All right, today we're going to be talking about an unlikely king. And have, have you ever thought what a saint is? Last Sunday, confirmation, or the last Sunday we had confirmation, we touched on what saints are. You remember what we talked about, what saints were? I know. We talked about that the, they're referred to those who have gone on before and with, with God in heaven. That we do not become angels as they are a separate creation of God. So today, we're celebrating all those who have gone on to glory. While we remember those who have passed on since last All Saints Day. Now historically speaking, many of the people we associate with being saints, such as St. Patrick of Ireland, St. Timothy, St. Teresa of Calcutta, another Teresa, Gregory the Great, St. Nicholas of Myra, or even King Alfred the Great of Wessex, St. Of Wessex. Lydia, and others generally came, and others. Generally, they came from unremarkable backgrounds, or were not ones considered to be future, future greats. Now, think of the saints of our church. Who are they? Who were they? Being a saint isn't about status or where you came from, come from. It is about humility and service to God. It's about sacrifice for God. It's about being willing to submit to the will of God, even
even Jesus was unassuming in the beginning. He was not the, what the world was expecting, definitely an unlikely king. Well, today, we're beginning a four-week series called Matthew, Discover the Kingdom. And over the next few weeks, we'll be looking at the kingdom of God established through his son and the implications of that kingdom. We'll start here on, on All Saints Day and end up on Christ the King Sunday. Well, let's begin this journey in the same place Jesus did. But this is All Saints Day and not Advent, right? <laughs> Little historical fact. During medieval times, Advent began next week. It was seven weeks long. That's why Lent is seven weeks long. Advent is seven weeks long. And you thought you guys started shopping for Christmas early. I have to tell my kids. You know, when I was a kid, actually Christmas shopping started in September. Because that's how long it took to get the stuff you ordered from Sears. Six <laughs> to eight weeks. So, Advent was seven weeks long at one time. It began the week after All Saints Week day. And in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 21, we learn some interesting things about Jesus before he was born. The entire chapter 1, we learn some interesting things about Jesus. First, his mother was a teenage woman. And, un and unwed by modern, modern uh, sense. She was engaged. In the ancient, and in the ancient world, in 4 B.C., she was considered sort of married. In other words, they had had the ceremony, but they have not had the wedding night yet. Two, he is not Joseph's child. Yet God calls uh, Joseph to care for him as his own. And let's be honest with each other. This is not exactly what you would imagine the savior of all humanity at the beginning of his story. We know that now. But in, at the time Matthew was written, this was not the story they were looking for. His mother Mary was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Joseph was going to divorce her, or break off the engagement. Quietly, but an angel intervened and revealed that Joseph, that Jesus would be the Messiah they were waiting for. This, within itself, would be shocking and totally not what we're thinking. Might think that king, the king would, of the universe, would come from the Messiah of the world. This takes place as a fulfillment of prophecy. It's not an Isaiah. As a result, as proof that the baby to be born is of God. The book of Matthew was written specifically for a Jewish audience. It was not written for Gentiles. It was written as to bear proof as to how Jesus was the Messiah. that he was raising up people that God would, would have been raising up people in unlikely places throughout the very beginning. In fact, if you were to look at Jesus' background in Matthew, the rest of Matthew chapter 1, 1 through 17, you're going to see some really interesting people in there. There's prostitutes. There's uh, women who Married to somebody else. There's a whole list of people in there. They just do not seem to be where you would think the Son of God would come from. 
In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 and 7, we learn that God chose Israel. Not because they were an abundant nation, because they were, and they were insignificant. This is what, uh, uh, in Deuteronomy, this is what it reads. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. See, out of this group of insignificant people, God chose later the youngest son of Jesse, who was a shepherd boy. David. David had all these son, brothers who were bigger. Some of them really, you know, he looks like a king. No, that's not the one. It wasn't until they got to David, who was the littlest and youngest of them all. And who happened to be the great, great, great grandfather of Joseph. For example, like I said, if you were looking up the genealogy from chapter 1, verses 1 through 17, you're going to see some really interesting people in his genealogy right there. A lot were insignificant, vulnerable. Surprising. You know, for instance, Ruth. He's, she's in there. Her heroism can take on many forms and can arise from many, from the most obscure places. How many miss the birth of the Messiah simply because they couldn't understand or believe the way he arrived in the world? Born in a feed bunk? That's what a manger is. Born to a teenage mother? By the power of the Holy Spirit? Really? Well, thankfully, God is well versed in the impossible, and thankfully, Jesus humbled himself and became his heavenly throne and joined us here. Same way with saints. That person did what? Oh, they can't do that. You can't be a pastor. St. Lydia, Lydia couldn't have been the first pastor in Europe. She was. In hyper, masculine. We haven't gotten that far yet, Sarah. Uh, <laughs> we're still back in the sermon. <laughs> I appreciate you getting ahead of us. There, there you go. That's good. That, and, and it's all right. Anyway, in hyper-masculine Macedonia in the 300s, or in the, excuse me, in the uh, night in the first century in Greece, she led the church. So heroes come from all sorts of impossibilities. And that's what saints are. They're the heroes within your church. See, the first step to experiencing Jesus as king is recognizing that you need to be rescued. You need a hero. And our King, Jesus Christ, was born to be a hero. He was here to, rep, to save our world. In fact, his name, Jesus, literally means God is with God with us. And Jesus is actually a, a Greek version of the word Josh, named Joshua, which means God is our salvation. Even his name save, it means to save, come to save us. Jesus sacrificed himself for us. He took, takes our place at the altar of our sins. Think about this. The practice of sacrificing to the king is an ancient one. Whether it was the kings, the Greek kings, or the Sumerian kings, or the Egyptian kings, or Roman emperors. We sacrificed to them. 
Jesus sacrificed himself to the ruler of this world to save us from that ruler. And I'm not talking about God. So that we might have the opportunity to change our lives. So that we too can sacrifice ourselves for God's glory to change the lives of others, all for our King. Think about it. If Jesus is the rightful King, the Messiah, and Savior of all humankind, he, is He not worthy of our sacrifice? Remember these words from Gabriel to Mary. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his son, of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. What do you think an, an appropriate response would be in such presence of such a king? Does he deserve our honor and praise? Consider how crazy it is that the eternal king of the universe was born in a basement stable in a feed bunk. See, stables were underneath the house. So it was like he was born in a basement in a food bowl. If you stop and really consider the scene, does that really seem the place of a king? And if that unlikely beginning isn't enough, how absurd is it that he left his heavenly throne to be here among us? That he came out of glory to be here with us? Think about, makes you think about all the fantastic lengths Jesus went for us to be our hero, our salvation. To be fair, following Jesus will cause disruptions in our lives. It does. All those saints I mentioned earlier, St. Nicholas gave away his entire fortune for the children of Myra. St. Timothy gave up his comfortable home in Cyprus, left his grandmother and his mother. Lydia, St. Lydia, put her livelihood in danger by establishing the church. Macedonia and rescuing abandoned children. Mother Teresa of Calcutta faced arrests and beatings by the Hindu authorities for going amongst the untouchables. St. Patrick was kidnapped by Irish pirates, faced down Druid priests, all to bring the gospel to the people of Ireland. you too will face opposition, or have. It's not all going to be a joyful walk in the park. Maybe not the opposition those saints face, but definitely you will be tested, and Jesus will be right there with you, right beside you, so that you can have the confidence in the journey. The kingdom of heaven is unlike any kingdom you'll find on this side of heaven. And it all starts with the king. Amen. Now we'll have the remembrance of saints. Whoa, 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 you're on a, you're on a, I'm not an auctioneer, Sarah. We can't go that fast. Oh. There we go. Whoa, now back one more slide. There. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the saints who, were, who ever worshipped you. Where your name was lifted and adored, we give you thanks, O oh God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil. Strong hands, 
thank you, God, for hard-working saints. Whether a hard habit or steel we do, head ragged or apron, blue collar or three-piece suited. They left their mark on the earth for you, for us, for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifice made, made by those, by those who have gone, gone before us. us. Bless the memories of your saints, God. May we learn how to walk wisely from your examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. Let us pray silently at this time as we prepare for all remembering those who have gone on to glory this past year. Okay, Sarah. Elna, Juniel, Kanak. Donna Darlene Hansen. Robert Faye Wiltsey. Brian Dean Wasnock. Lucille Altimus. And to those who have, were not mentioned here, we passed on us who remember six. Let us pray. Almighty God, your saints are one with you in the physical body of Christ. Give us grace to follow them in all virtue and holiness until we come to those inexpressible joys which you have prepared for those who truly love them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. This time we'll share our concerns. And what concerns do we have to lift up today? Keep Nancy Kurtz in your prayers. She is on the porch. Also keep uh, Linda, keep the Todd family in your prayers. We're at home today. So we're going to speak. More concerns? We'll continue to keep our farmers in your prayers as they're in the field of finishing up. Also, uh, the hunters are out this week. This it is uh, pheasant season opened up on uh, Sunday, Saturday. So keep the hunters in your prayers. to lift up? All right. Well, let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joys we received of the beautiful weather and as the crops are coming in. 
Lord, while we celebrate these joys, we also lift our concerns. Be with us today who are mourning or uh, loved ones who passed away this year. Be with our country and uh, civility is needed as we approach in the election and the impact beyond. Be with Nancy as uh, she goes for this week. Be with the uh, Todd family and with uh, Linda's son. Be with uh, the farmers who are in the fields. Be with the, with the niece. And be, be with uh, those hunters who are out this week and throughout this season. As we ask for your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And now we pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Okay, at the, we're, this time we'll have communion, and um, the, the liturgy is in the, or some of the liturgy is in the uh, your, uh, bulletin, and then part of it will be chapter, the last part will be uh, from page 13 in the hymn. Prayer and confession. God, send us saints. And we imprison them or nail them on crosses. Have mercy. God, you send us saints. And we persuade ourselves that they are fools or members or incompetents. Have mercy. God, send us saints. And we need them for reminding us that our comfort requires the power to give others. Have mercy. God, you send us saints. And we give you more of them. Have mercy. God's words to us in a word, word of forgiveness, a word of assurance, a word of grace. We are loved and accepted because we are, and God is God. And nothing can finally separate us from our Creator, our Parent, our Sustainer. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take from this all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, and so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those we have named here. With Vi, with Brian, with Donna, Yes. Bob? And El 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 Since we have surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other. What a ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
33. Marching to Zion.
and I wonder should we blow them out with these candles?